Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. I am Brian Fisher. Remember to call if you want to weigh in. Anything we've talked about today, we've talked about the obituary for a nation. We have talked about the homosexual agenda and how they are the real bullies, the real bigots uh, on the block. We have talked about President Obama's lies in the debate, specifically about Planned Parenthood doing mammograms. We've talked about Chris Matthews believing that protecting the sanctity of human life is Sharia law. It's not. It's what the Founding Fathers talked about. That's what they were talking about when they said one of the unalienable rights that we have been given by our Creator is the right to life. So abortion, we know, is flatly wrong based on the Declaration and the Constitution because it deprives a baby of his right to life, of a fundamental, unalienable right that's not given to him by government, but given to him by God. So we'd like to know what you think. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840 is the number to call. Let's grab clip number three, uh, Rob. Uh, 888-589-8840 is the number to call if you want to weigh in on anything that we have uh, talked about today. Now, uh, this this is an interesting little thing that actually got past me when I was watching the debate. But here is President Obama, and if you listen to him, He's talking about his presidency in the past tense. Let's listen. The way we're going to create jobs here is not just to change our tax code, but also to double our exports. And we are on pace to double our exports, one of the commitments I made when I was president. That's creating tens of thousands of jobs all across the country. So that's one of the commitments I made when I was president. So apparently... Barack Obama sees the way that things are uh, going. Uh, the uh, I think it's Gallup has him up 49-47 uh, today, has uh, Romney up 49-47 nationwide. Gallup had Romney 51-45 yesterday. That's huge. You get over that 50% barrier, that is an absolutely huge thing. Um, Candy uh, Crowley... Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, that's good. That's, that's a good suggestion. Rob, give me a suggestion. Let's play the next uh, soundbite in, uh, in, in the roster here. I was going to go to phones. We'll go to right after the soundbite. <laughs> President Obama, I think he knows this thing is getting away from him. I've got, the, uh, I've got a little bit of polling data here. Let me see if I can grab the polling data here that's just from uh, last night. By the way, he has chosen an indoor venue for his election night rally. Remember, he had 240,000 people at Grant Park in Chicago. That's not going to happen again. That's not going to He's going indoors uh, someplace where it is uh, contained. So let me look at the polling data that we've got just that's come in this morning. Here is, uh, give me a break. Here is, <laughs> I got a staff with a warped and twisted sense of humor. Hey, I was given content, guys. I was talking about the indoor venue. These guys are in there playing Jeopardy music, and I am delivering you much appreciated and precious uh, content. Now, uh, to get my guys off my back, here's Rasmussen's latest. Romney's at 49, Obama 47. That's a three-day tracking poll. Obama's only at 44% in Michigan. Now, this is where he said, I went and bailed these people out. I saved Michigan. I saved the auto industry. How come they don't recognize it? He's only at 44%, and history indicates that an incumbent who is below 45% is almost destined uh, to lose. And the guy that ran this poll was chief of staff to a state senator who is a Democrat, so not exactly an unbiased poll leaning toward Obama best they can. And here's a Newsmax Zogby poll from Florida indicating that Obama is losing ground among women and, interestingly, among women. Union workers. So he knows he's in trouble. And here's what he's out yesterday in Ohio. Remember, this is a key battleground state. Everybody thinks that he's got to win Ohio to win. Here's what he was willing to say yesterday on the campaign trail. This is a sign of a candidate who is desperate. Let's listen. I want your vote. I I am not too proud to beg. I want you to vote. And the good news is you can vote in Ohio right now. Find out where at vote.barackobama.com. 
If you live nearby, you can vote just a few blocks away. So that's Barack Obama. Ain't too proud to beg. Let's go to the phones. Let's grab Emilio in Victoria, Texas. Emilio, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. How hey, you doing? Good. What's I up? I appreciate your ministry. Thank you. And they ought to have more people like you in Congress. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we, I'd sure like a lot more people that... Uh, you know, kind of share the values that we talk about on this program and on this network. I I think if we don't want to write an obituary for the United States like the one we read from Israel, we've got to have people like that pulling the levers of power. Anyway, go right. ahead, Emilio. Thank you, and go ahead. Okay, as far as the, uh, going back to the, the abortion that uh, Planned Parenthood, um, they say, uh, you were talking to somebody earlier. Um, I forgot what his name was. But anyway, uh, as far as when... Uh, uh, a baby is conceived. Yeah. Uh, is it in the womb? And then a while back, they had that test tube baby. Mm-hmm. Where they would have that baby in the. And I was just wondering. I mean, when when do they they say you know it's a uh, child is a child? All right. Well, listen. You are talking about when do we believe a child is a child, or talking about the pro-choice folks? Pro-choice. Ah. Pro-choice. When do they? Uh, when do they think that? Uh, a child is conceived, I mean, when it's a child. Yeah. Well, you know, and and that's the fuzzy thing about this, Emilio, and this this is why it's worth, when we talk to people who are pro-abortion, is press them on this. Well, when does it become a baby? When does it stop becoming a thing? When does it stop becoming a clump of cells? When does it stop becoming a blob of, of protoplasm and become a baby? When does that happen? And they can't tell you. They have no way to tell you because there isn't any bright line where suddenly you can say this has now passed from being a thing to being a person. You know, it's interesting to me, and I appreciate the call, Emilio. Thank you for that. You know, you you look at, uh, uh, you know, a big thing now. I mean, I I don't know how long it's been a big thing, but you see these um, celebrities, these Hollywood actresses and and, and such, uh, when they get pregnant, they have pictures of them celebrating their what? Their baby bump. It's not a fetus bump. It's not a protoplasm bump. It's not a clump of cells bump. It is a baby bump. As soon as they begin to show, what are they calling it? They are calling it a baby. So they know better. Uh, You know, and uh, like my good friend Neil Mama says, look, if you're hunting, this is one of our strongest moral arguments. If you're out there hunting, you know, you read about hunting accidents all the time. People getting shot. Had a tragedy in Idaho, my home state. Ten-year-old girl got shot on a hunting trip. Mistaken for a wild animal by a member of her own hunting party. And it's a tragedy when that kind of thing happens. And that's why one of the, one of the basic principles of safe hunting is if you're not sure it's an elk instead of a person, don't shoot until you know you err on the side of protecting human life. And that's one of our arguments to pro choice is if you can't tell us when that becomes a baby, shouldn't we err on the side of caution and on the side of life. Well, thank you, Emilio. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Lisa, Columbus, Ohio. Lisa, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hi, Brian. Um, I just wanted to comment along the same topic of uh, when life is actually conceived or what is considered life. Mm-hmm. And I, I read this the other day online, and I never thought of it this way, but it really struck me. If the scientific community found a fertilized egg on Mars or any other planet, would they be screaming, we have found life on another planet? Mm. Would they consider the, what their pro-abortion people are calling a clump of cells, would they consider that life yeah. on another planet? Well, that's a good point. That would be the find of the ages, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And they would and call it life. There'd be no mistake about it. They would call it life. We have found life on another planet. Absolutely. And it wouldn't matter if it was a potential or if it, you know, whatever definition they want to use, fertilized cells, they would definitely say it's evidence of life. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great call, Lisa. I appreciate that. You know, and it's interesting, you even have something similar to that right here with uh, birds that are on the endangered species list. I looked into this back in Idaho, bald eagles or gold eagles, particularly bald eagles, because I was just kind of curious what our policies are when it comes to unborn animal life. And I found out that if you tamper with the egg of a bald eagle, this is a pre-born eagle. 
This is a fetus eagle. This is a protoplasm eagle. This is a clump of cells eagle. It hasn't been born yet. It hasn't hatched. It's still in the shell. And if you tamper with one, if you destroy the egg of a bald eagle, you can go to jail for six months and you can be subject to a fine of $10,000. So again, it's just this bizarre thing where we place a higher value on animal life, unborn animal life, than we do on unborn human life. Last call of the hour. Let's grab a call from Matthew Cleveland, Ohio. Matthew, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Yeah, hi, Brian. I want to talk to you about the homosexual agenda. How yes, are sir. You today? Good. Go ahead. Good. Um, I just wanted to hit you on the fact that, uh, you know, while I agree that uh, students who believe in God and believe in religion have every right under our Constitution to argue uh, against the homosexual quote-unquote agenda, I just think that Likewise, if they want to be treated for, with their religious freedoms, gays and lesbians should be afforded uh, freedom to uh, preach what they believe in, too. Absolutely. We're all for that. We're for vigorous debate. We're for discussion. We're not trying to shut anybody down uh, whatsoever. Enough- we, we invite the discussion. We invite the discussion, Matthew. They're the ones that want to shut us down. They're the ones that do not want us even permitted to speak or Brian? argue our case. Brian? Yes, sir. I, I wanted to hit you on the fact that you, what you think about Ted Olson's comments that conservatives should embrace gay marriage. Because I, I quite agree with his comments that marriage should be uh, encouraged through, you know, all, all same sex and opposite sex. Couples. All right. Well, do you, uh, where would you draw the line, Matthew? Do you think uh, an individual ought to be able to marry two people? I think consenting adults who are forming healthy bonds. Um, should be encouraged. So, so you'd be in favor of somebody marrying two or three or four or five people, as long as they're all in agreement. That's fine with you. As long as it doesn't harm society as a whole, I don't think. Okay, it's- well, that's where we differ, Matthew, because it does harm society as a whole. We can talk about that when we come back. Focal point AFR talk. Stay tuned. Be right back after the news. American family.